this is nice. 2011 Mazda. It's the RX-8 with the 1.3 liter naturally aspirated non-turbocharged rotary engine. Uh, this thing actually came in a few weeks ago, about a week and a half, two weeks ago. A uh, customer stated that there was a check engine light and it had, a, I think it was a P2808 code. Uh, don't quote me on that one. But the basic diag tree of that code ultimately said clear codes, restart engine, test drive vehicle. If codes come back, replace ECM. So what had happened was, is the owner of the vehicle had ordered and replaced or ordered a new ECM. This ECM we sent off to a company called uh, Flagship ECM Repair. And they basically unboxed it and then put some stamps on it. See the little blue, little blue stamps right there? They put some stamps on it, never opened up the case, charged us 160 bucks, sent it back and said, no, sorry guys, we can't fix it. So the uh, vehicle owner ordered or bought, uh, purchased or bought another ECM uh, on the internet land. We brought, they sent the thing down here. We put this Mazda on that tow truck, sent it over to the Mazda dealership where they made us buy a new key because you have to have two keys to program security uh, when installing the, uh, the program into the ECM. So they made us buy a key to install the program into the ECM. They installed it and sent it back to us. So we gave them a running vehicle and now we have a, a non-running vehicle. So let's, uh, let's figure out what the dealio is and why this thing does not run. Uh, I had the scan tool in here earlier. There's no trouble code stored in the ECM. Um, there's really nothing going on with it. So that tells me that if we have no codes and I, whoa, and I know we have fuel, then we have some other kind of underlying issue here that must have just occurred. And what I think had happened is we may have actually flooded this uh, while attempting to uh, restart the engine. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna head back into the cabin over there and I'm gonna try to uh, clear flood this engine and uh, get the gasoline out of the crank. Now clear flood mode is basically a fairly simple operation. All we have to do here is apply full throttle to the accelerator pedal. So we got foot on the floor and then we're just gonna crank it. What happens when we hold the throttle down is the ECM will disable fuel injector pulse. So theoretically, it should not be fueling the engine. We'll see if it's gonna run. Foot on the floor, cranking, cranking, cranking. We have crank signal. See how the RPM moved? But, doesn't seem to wanna crank, let off the pedal. Back on the pedal, off the pedal. It should be fueling now and nothing we have nothing so now i need to fix this vehicle because it came here running and i don't want it to leave on a tow truck so here's the plan i'm going to go ahead and check the basic stuff first so if we look down below the throttle body we see the ignition coil packs here there's a one two looks like three four plugs spark plugs that is and they are kind of buried way down here against the engine block under that wiring harness. So I'm gonna dig one of those spark plugs out and we're gonna take a look and see what condition this condition is in. Okay, well that wasn't fun. I didn't even record it because this was difficult to figure out the muscle memory here, but I got a hold of one of the plugs down yonder. Again, I believe there's four of them in this engine and I'm wondering what condition they're in. Maybe they're all fouled out from uh, being flooded or uh, perhaps there's some other kind of situation going on here. Anyway, let me get these guys dug out, at least one of them, and we'll see what we're looking at. Oh. Okay, that's not looking too super happy. It's an NGK Iridium made in JA Pan, Japan and yeah look at that this thing's uh it's full of carbon or something look at this thing that's nasty okay over here on the bench taking a peek uh at the electrode inside of the spark plug 
uh, we can see that is very, very, very carbon fouled in there. I don't even know if the electrode is still visible. Yeah, that's the anode right there, the electrode right next to it. You can see it, but this thing is so full of carbon, I'm surprised it's able to fire at all. That's, that's horrible. Look at that in there. Okay, so way down in the hole, I see another spark plug boot. Uh, I can tell you right now, you guys are not going to be able to see uh, what it is that I'm doing in here. So we're just going to sort of dig these out as quickly as possible and then get back to seeing the type of uh, carnage here that seems to be involved with these, uh, these particular units. So I got a spark plug socket down there on one of the plugs. Let me... Uh, let me reach down here with this ratchet and break her loose. I'll spin that one out. Okay, spark and plug. It's still not loose. I can barely even keep the socket on the actual plug. There's no, no, no space down the side of these holes here. Like, at all. I wonder if I'm supposed to do this from the bottom side, maybe. I actually might unclick be easier there we go. by the way the service interval on the uh, computer stated that these plugs are to be replaced every 37,500 miles on the odometer okay that one's loose that was the view of my shoulder was it good Spin out this next one right here. See what this old boy is looking like. It's spinning. It's coming out. It's in my hand. I got it. And the survey says it's not even the same spark plug. It looks like the same spark plug. But that's a whole different uh, business end on it right there. Interesting. Okay, well, it's two down. Uh, let's get the wire off the next one here. There's like an upper and a lower for each combustion chamber. Um, let me pull out the lower on this front chamber here. These are the plug boots. They're not uh, not really wanting to come off very easily. Man, I regret. Or I, I just don't like the position that I'm in. The condition of the position. Come here, you spark plug boot. Okay, so the boot in hand here. This is the forward bank of spark plugs upper plug. There's like an upper and a lower. Socket going in. Dig this next one out. See what it looks like. Dropping my socket. Now, Mazda people, explain yourself. Okay, Rache. I'm gonna lower that down and make some contact here. Ooh, wait, 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 parts people are here, hang on. I may just put those other two in while the parts are here. That way, I don't have to get the wires confused. Are these the parts? Who that? Ah, right, there's the guy <laughs> giving me spark plugs. There's two different ones actually, which is weird. Ah, I noticed that because I pulled out. There's, um, a, there's a trailing and a leading. Yeah, because look, look what I pulled out. I pulled out two different plugs. See that? Huh. And they're two different part numbers. I was wondering about that. So. Yeah, so I got you the other ones too. Ah. Because the, um, the other ones that uh, Mrs. Ray wanted don't show up till about 1.30. Oh yeah, we don't want that. We want we want them now. So hopefully, these are, well, I mean, I'm gonna say they're correct because you just said one. Oh, they're trailing. correct. They're gonna fit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no, everything's the same on them. The only difference is the heat range. Um, that's probably why there's two different part numbers. You got a cold start plug and a hot running plug. Yay. Because it's a rotary and these are made out of black magic. <laughs> Seriously, this is true. Uh, throw those in the office. So we're yep. good, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. There we go. Second part number plug. Uh-huh. Well, you guys heard the man. That explains why we have two different part numbers. 
Okay, so now that we kind of know what we're doing here, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put in the replacement here. This, uh, this is the one that came out of the bottom hole on the back bank. Because that's the one that came out of the bottom hole on the back bank. So this one looks just like it. We're going to match them up. Okay, we're screwing in the one plug. I'm going to go ahead and thread them both in and then we'll go back and apply some uh, some torquage action here. So that was the bottom unit. This one's the uh, the one on top. I'm assuming that's what's called the, the leading edge plug. I'll screw that guy in. Yeah, the, uh, the parts quantity page on, on the ordering system says that this vehicle only has two plugs, but apparently that's two times two. Here, so now that I've got kind of myself out of the way, if you look right down in there behind that wire, you can see both spark plugs, upper and the lower right there. So I have decided that this giant ratchet right here is just too much for inside of there. So what I have is a very unique little ratchet. This is a quarter inch drive sized ratchet with a 3 h drive end on it. And that's going to allow me to drive the spark plug socket assembly so I can reach in there with some more access and apply torque to these uh, spark plugs. Because this is hard and there's no space. I, I, I seriously think I'm supposed to do this from the bottom of the car. There's no way someone said, hey, you know what? This looks like an easy way to access these spark plugs. We'll just leave that the way it is. Put them down here or not think about it. There's no way, especially with a replacement interval of 37,500 miles, because that's a lot of intervals. Unless they didn't intend the the Mazda to last past 37,500 miles. It's also possible. You never know. <clears throat> anyway, I feel the crush washers crushing down on these uh, these plugs here. Mm -hmm. Click. Okay. Here we go. Okay, there's that unit. Now, one wire, and then the other one's right down below, right next to the plug. So let me reach back in there we'll slap that bottom plug wire on I know we cannot see anything here folks I, I realize that uh, is your regret my apologies wish I could change it but I can't so I won't I figure I'll make up the lack of visuals with some uh, creative linguistics okay so I'm moving to the front of the engine uh, upper plug. I'm assuming that's the, what they called the leading. Did you bring coffee? Yeah, that's the leading plug. So we're gonna pull this leader out here. Well, thank you. Are you recording me? She's recording me. Hello. How's my hair? Is there something in my teeth? I do not like this particular car. Oh. All right, I'll it's hurting my wrist I'll because this with you. it's like it's like trying to it's like trying to try your tie your shoe and free fall. That's what this feels like. Seriously, that's what it feels like. I mean, not the gut feeling of free fall. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. This is hard, is okay. what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to articulate well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help difficulty. You, I'm, gonna put this I'm not even going to edit out that nonsense because I promised them some ling linguistic entertainment because they can't see what I'm doing in here so I was like here I'll just babble on a bunch of nonsense and maybe that'll make you stay around okay I'll be back yeah what do you think about that okay. she okay. has no idea what I'm talking about nope <laughs> she's like whatever Ray do whatever you want I don't care anyway I got that spark plug out look here here it comes oh that one's just as nasty as the other ones are yeah it's all carboned up I don't even know if there's a gap on it. So, let's see. Two different types, remember? The one with the slits in it and the one without the slits. This is the non-slitted plug. So that's gonna go back in the hole. And I'm going in, can't even see. I'm 
trying to see. Yeah, I can't even feel it, to tell you the truth. But we're just gonna poke around until it slides in, and then we will know. There we go, that one's in. Hi, what are you guys doing? Hanging out, that's cool. Oh, fun fact, while we're sitting here chit-chatting, uh, my team and I at our merchandise uh, sector of Rain Man Ray's repaired, Repairs has, uh, we have changed management and gotten rid of our warehousing facility because we have uh, acquired a new warehousing facility. Uh, because of that, we had to spend money and I don't like spending money on stuff. So because of that, since I had to spend money, I had no choice but to but to double down and we are ordering additional merchandise to place uh, in inventory. So uh, if anybody would like to check out our uh, our wares that we are peddling here on the internet, uh, just go to rainmanraisedrepairs.com and uh, check out our merchandise lineup. It's still growing and we do not have the, uh, the level of uh, part number and SKU diversity that uh, would be optimal, but I've got to build up to that. So bear with me. Um, if it was not for you folks purchasing our hats, mugs, t-shirts and stickers and other whatnots, then uh, I would not be able to finance such things. Uh, and there's people that pay their mortgage off of that. So we all collectively would like to say thank you and we appreciate your patronage. And that will end uh, this moment of shameless self-promotion. <clears throat> Click. And that's another spark plug installed. See what I did there? I substituted my ability to show you what we're doing. And I just told you about it. And then hopefully I sold a couple t-shirts. That way I can buy some more t-shirts. That way I can sell some more t-shirts because everybody wears t-shirts, right? Wires on. There we go. Okay, so that's, that's three. Um, now, we mentioned earlier that uh, I was suspecting this thing was flooding and we had attempted to use clear flood mode and you may be wondering why I'm not uh, pulling these plugs out and then trying to use clear flood mode. And that is because these things are so incredibly difficult to reach that I'm not going to uh, attempt to pull them all out at once and sit here and crank the engine around. We're doing them one at a time. And then I'll clear flood mode with the plugs in, uh, it'll run. So on to number, number four. This job is hard. It actually is. Should have been an astronaut, to tell you the truth. Okay, last one going in. How's my hair? Yeah, gonna have purple tunnel. Okay, I got a, got some traction on that last plug, and it is turning. Ooh, this one feels kind of gritty. I don't know if I like it. You guys remember like a year ago when I was never seen on camera, you just saw like the the singular hand and that was it. We've come so far. I was sitting here sweating with bad hair talking to you guys and there's just no shame in it. I even tried to sell you some t-shirts. Here it comes. We're going to add uh, custom tools and performance parts to the website as well. On top of menu services offered here at the shop because I think the website should be used as a, a tool to promote the shop and its functions so therefore that one's flooded yeah so therefore we're also doing a website redesign but yeah this one's actually got liquid on it right here you nasty let's get rid of you and this is our last unit. Again, it's got the slots in it. That's how you know. So, the plug is in the socket. Flip that to tighten mode and 
just gonna squeeze this thing right down inside past the fuel lines past this that and the other um i just dropped the spark plug out of the socket there it is we're back out here bear with me patience Got some crusties on there. Oops. Nice and shiny. Okay. Going back in. Attempt number two. Yeah, I, I really wish you guys could see what we're what we're doing down here. Other than scratching my arm and making it irritated. That's actually a real thing. Because see, like the clamps on the hoses are just digging in quite uncomfortable this is why mechanics are often found angry because they're highly irritated hot sweaty leaning over like look at this so i'm leaned over the car here knees are kind of straight and actually trying to bend the wrong way it's stretching the calves the lower back has to support all the weight and then i gotta change the shoulder angle all weird shove your arm down in then wedge it against something that's poking a hole in the side of you just to make some turns on a vehicle that has no cylinders and four spark plugs. This is why we can be a little grumpy. And then you end up with a, a job where you got underpaid on, they'll get you back next time. Technicians, you guys all know about the, uh, I'll get you back next time. And service advisors. Cut that out. We don't like it. You're not making any friends. Yeah, back in the day it used to be busted knuckles. Now it's like busted everything else. Like your knuckles are fine. Cause the wrenches don't slip off anymore, but you will break your L1 and L2. Got a chiropractor? You're gonna need one. Okay, that one's tight. Let's get it plugged up and then we'll uh, try to restart this thing again. Okay, everything here looks clear. Let's turn up the charger a little bit since we're going to do some cranking. Let's hop back in and fingers crossed to see if she fires up. Beginning engine restarting sequence now. Fingers crossed. Uh, no. Clear flood. Clear flood, clear flood, clear flood. Come on, baby, start. Yeah, it's not starting. Hmm. It's not okay. Let me check engine light did something. Let's see if it gave me a, uh, a code of some sort. Codes menu. Hmm. Memory? Abort. No codes present. Okay. Pending codes. No codes present. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Persistence. They say. Clear flood persistence. Low compression rotary. Come on, baby. Start.
Let's hit it again. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's trying. She's trying. Come on, wake up. Put on the floor. Almost. Come on with it. All right. Okay, going back in. Uh, this is going to be the one, right? This is the one. Beginning inch and stocking sequence now. Come on, you piece of rotary. This thing's flooded so bad. Come on, baby, go. I, I gave it some throttle just then. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, All right. I need to back off and let the battery come back up. And I'm hoping if we get that battery to a nice full charge, it'll spin super fast. And that might get us the oomph we need to get her over the edge here. She's going to run. It's definitely going to run. Watch this. Here we go. <laughs> that was easy. You're good luck, man. You should hang out more often. Look at it. It's alive. Piece of, piece of rotary. It's so flooded. Nice. It is back. Okay, so. What I'm gonna do here, shut it down, and nothing on the pedal, restart. <laughs> I win. Let's see how much nasty just blew out of the tailpipe. Holy smoke, sorry Dave, you all right? <laughs> Got it. It is alive. 57,000 RPM. Right? Sure. Ming, 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 ming. Cool. Yay. I fixed it. Here, we can turn that down a whole bunch. We don't need you turned up to 200 amps anymore. <laughs> All righty, it has been uh, probably about 45 minutes. This thing hanging out here in idle mode. Battery's been charging slowly. The Nader has been also recharging the battery slowly. I do believe it's time to uh, recheck the starting condition and we're gonna go out on a test drive real quick to make sure she's cleared out and then i can call my guy and let him have his mazda back okay exiting service mode now put that guy back down inside of its home over here kick it in covers on for the ecm that was there battery covers on fuse block is on all that stuff down there is on looking good you know what's not on is this clamp right here gotta put that back there we go stick that right there that's the uh, vacuum tube for the brake booster so redoing 
what we were just doing put that back there we go goodbye Mazda 1.3 instantaneous ignition this is good Wunderbar exit okay so what I want to do I'm gonna go out quick spin around the block give it some wide open throttle make sure everything's cleared out and blown out and no longer flooded and this thing should be good to go drive drive Mazda drive Ooh, happy little car I like it all right let's see what she does Full speed runs good nice and smooth like rotary is doing rotary things I do believe folks that this uh, this vehicle is all set we're good to go we do not have our reoccurring check engine light that stated replace ECM uh, final thoughts man I must say that this ECM uh, replacement thing was kind of a fiasco it required uh, two tow truck trips one to the dealership one back from the dealership and then we had to fix all the non-running stuff so yeah this thing came in running left on a tow truck came back on a tow truck and now it's gonna leave running so we got through it I did right by the job um, if I had to do this all over again uh, I, I gotta say I would not have called flagship ECM they uh, I, and I don't mean to bash them but I just felt like when we called them to ask if they were capable of repairing or replacing the CCM, I feel like they already knew that they weren't gonna touch it and they gladly accepted my $160 plus shipping to receive the old ECM and then say, yeah, uh, we can't fix this. And then they sent it back. I, I think they already knew that. That's what it felt like to me. I I've got no proof of such things, but that's just what it seemed like. Um, that being said, I'm probably not going to be over enthusiastic about using an ECM repair service uh, that I've never dealt with before, and I certainly won't use them again. It's nothing personal against them, but you know, it was I just didn't feel very good as a customer uh, dealing business with that company. Uh, anyway, um, I took a huge bath in this car. It ate up a lot of time. Um, I'm disappointed in uh, my shop's performance and how this was handled. But uh, at the end of the day, the customer got their car back. They have their new ECM. They do not have a check engine light. And uh, I think this thing is good to go. It's ready to be returned back to my customer. So guys, having said all that, that will conclude my final thoughts on this particular project, Mazda. Um, let me know what you think about this car and the situation that I just described in the comment section down below. Uh, do not forget to tap that like and subscribe button wire down there. If you are itching for more, please feel free to visit RainManRaysRepairs.com. Link down in this video's description and in the pinned comment. And that will take you to our website, which is also uh, about to undergo a massive construction rejuvenation project because I think the website layout is stupid. But while you're there, I would like you to check out our merchandise link because I have a lot of new old stock that I need to get rid of because we're going to make room for new stock. So everything that you see currently in the merchandise store is going to be limited time. Uh, we are no longer producing uh, that specific run of the t-shirts, hats, and things of that nature that are in the store. And uh, as those work their way out, I'm going to restock the shelves with a even higher tier of customized merchandise for you and me and all of our friends to wear. So anyway, guys, thank you all for watching this video. Appreciate you being here all the way to the end. Uh, thanks for checking out the webpage and thank you for your user interactions uh, with the channel. That would include the like buttons, uh, comments, and subscription status changes. And that will conclude my multiple moments of shameless self-promotion. I'm going to get this unit parked. I'm going back inside. I got other stuff to do. There's a, a car that was eaten by rats and we need to check that thing out next. So I'm going to close this one out. See y'all later. Thanks for watching. End of day, end of video, end of transmission, end of Mazda Rotary. Oh, side note, looky here. We put those spark plugs in just in time. They expire 37,500 miles and we're at 36,699 on the odometer.